Hey, party people. Good morning, Krusty Crew. We just pulled up to Bricks and Minifigs here in Austin, Texas, because I heard they had a really good buy-in of used Lego sets lately, so we're here to check it out. Ross, what are you looking for? All right, so you know me. I'm always going to be looking for Clone Wars stuff, but again, I'm really into Lord of the Rings lately. I'm really trying to get some of those sets that I missed out in about 10 years ago, so hoping to find that. I'm looking for Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the new Velma show? I'm really sad, but I didn't like it. I really tried. I couldn't do it. Wham! <laughs> <laughs> really bummed me out. Now you know what it's like for the sequels to come out. We're about to head into Bricks and Minifigs here. Ross, are you ready? There's something I need to confess to you. What? What is that? You know, a few months ago when we were at voting and I was wearing this shirt and then I got the You Voted sticker and I put it on my shirt right here and you were like, make sure you take it off before you put it in the wash or it's going to ruin your shirt. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, I forgot to take it off. And I've washed the shirt like four times and there's still a little sticky residue on it. I'm really disappointed. Me too. All right, now that that's out of the way, Ross, are you ready to head in? Let's do it. Woo! Bricks and minifigs, bricks, bricks and minifigs, bricks and bricks and bricks and minifigs. Okay, let's go. All right, just got into bricks and minifigs and Ross is excited. Okay, I'm excited for that. So they have the town hall here from 2012. This is like my white whale modular. The one modular I don't have that I need. We are only missing three, but this is the only one I actually really want. They have it at a really good price. So we asked them about it and it turns out um, that it is very sun-kissed is the term <laughs> they like to use, which means that unfortunately it had a lot of yellowing. It did a lot of work to try to either swap out some pieces or restore some pieces, but um, you could kind of tell in some areas that maybe it is a little bit yellower than others. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know what? It might be a little bit yellow on some of the white, but it all looks like pretty common pieces to replace. I don't think it'll be that hard. Yeah, look at that. I think it has all the figures. Oh, wow. All the, I, oh man, I think. That's a really good deal too, right? Yeah, that's gonna be hard to pass up. Um, I don't know, Emily, what do you think? I'm nervous, should we do it? <laughs> we still need it for our city because we don't have like a governing body yet. It's just <laughs> no like chaos. The other thing I really like about this one is it, it's really tall. And kind of the problem I have with all the modulars is they're all about the same level. They're all three stories. So that's why I really like the police station is because it's taller than the other ones. And daily bugle but this one's also just commands a presence like boom. oh my gosh yeah i think uh I think set be, it aside <laughs> i might be grabbing that <laughs> okay so we just set the tag aside i'm so excited for this one it'll look so good in the city it's like two modulars in a month I, it's a little too much but whatever it's fine it's fine all right so i'm still kind of coming down the excitement off of just like walking into a town hall <laughs> that's amazing but i'm pumped i'm pumped but i want to show like all of these stuff so this is like a blast from the past these are old school by uncle. You wouldn't believe me if I said this, but I actually had a lot of these. I had, uh, this one was really cool. It was like a little Prey Mantis guy. Um, and it's funny, so you can actually, the like tension works on this little thing where if you squeeze it, he, he closes his claws. I want to say this is like <laughs> 2004. Yep, yeah, hey, nailed it. First try, 2004. So I think this is about third wave Bionicle, third generation. And then they have like an interesting mix of different Bionicle from different um, generations here. I want to say this is first gen and then uh, some other ones kind of scattered around. So some of the newer ones, I don't really remember as much, but it's really cool seeing like new Bionicle in box. Each generation has like a different little gimmick. So this one has uh, like a little hockey puck that they play. I remember like in Canon, it was actually a game that they would play with each other. Uh, this one has like a, you know, one of those things like you pull it and the little thing goes up and flies away. Um, sometimes it falls into the fireplace, it happens. I think this one doesn't have any cool feature like that. And then this one has like a ball that shoots. So that's pretty cool. They got two pretty cool gift with purchases here. So they got this one right here, which is the Jane Goodall. I was gonna say Jane Austen for some reason. Uh, the monkey battle pack. So that's a cool one. We actually have a few of those that we stocked up on. And then what's really interesting is that they have Eiffel's apartment. How do you get Eiffel's apartment again? You, you need to buy, to buy the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, right? So Crazy. that's a $800 gift with purchase, essentially. They got it here for 80, so that's a pretty good deal. Okay, so we talked about seeing them earlier, but they got a lot of bonkles here, um, a, like from a bunch of different generations. So this is Gen 1. This is actually my favorite one from Gen 1, and it's cool because she would do this thing where if your back was itchy, she would scratch it for you. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. This guy I always imagined was like the cool guy. He only had one eye for some reason, um, and he also had ice skates. Um, but you know, when I take a look at all of these Bionicle, all I can really think is the All-American Rejects playing. When life is something's wrong, 
you move along. If you don't know, there was like a, a Bionicle movie, and for some reason, All American Rejects, this song was like the headliner to the movie. And so now every time I hear that movie, I just think of Bionicles walking in slow motion. <laughs> Okay, so we're coming up here on a whole shelf of random Minecraft sets I've never actually seen. So without looking at the names of the sets, I'm just gonna try to name them myself. Ready? Polar Bear Plunge, Moose in a Barn on Halloween, Mini Minecraft, That Guy Needs Some Lotion, Duel of Fates, Skeletons versus Minecraft Guy, Seriously Get Some Lotion, but this time in fire. That guy might also need lotion, but I think he's in a desert. Also, there's a pig. Giant moose battle and a ninja. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> and then I still have this one here. I love this one. Tigura's Roar from the Adventurous theme, 2003. Like the little minifig in the front's pretty cool looking, but then this guy just kind of creeps me out in the back. I don't know what it is. It's probably because he doesn't have eyes. <laughs> yeah, probably. Going in down here, check it out. They have some SpongeBob, the Krusty Krab. This is the Krusty Krab Adventure set from 2009 for $40. And look at their face printing. They are so cute. I love the little burger car. That is adorable. Like I want that in my Lego city. I love this little build too. It's really cute. I would love it though if Lego like remade this as a giant like modular style Krusty Krab. Like that'd be insane. So I'm pretty stoked. They got a lot of cool, somewhat recent, somewhat old sealed Star Wars sets. So right off the bat, I always got to make fun of the little chibi ATST. What cute. are you going to do about it? All right. So this is actually a set from Emily's favorite TV show. I love Rebels. So what's super cool, if you you guys don't already know this uh, particular tank was actually like a, a toy from Hasbro that was like based off of the old Ralph McLaurin Star Wars art that like Hasbro made into a toy and then in Rebels they made it back into a ship and then Lego made it into a toy so it's really meta when you think about how like it was a toy and then it was canon and now it's a toy. It's wild that you know all of this <laughs> honestly. Yeah I don't know where I put that all in my brain. Then coming over here so this is really cool so this is uh this is the battle pack the Mandalorian battle pack and it's funny looking at it because it's retired but it just feels like it wasn't retired because it really just went out like a year ago. Mandalorian season three trailer just dropped. Uh, I won't give away any spoilers. Not that there's really that many spoilers in it, but I will say there was some Mandalorians that look strikingly similar to some of these in the battle pack. So I wonder how that happened. I feel like it's gonna go up in price pretty soon. I guarantee you it will. I'm glad there's we have no a few way. of them. Yeah, I did stack up on these a little bit. Okay, so this set is just an enigma um, when it comes to Star Wars is this is the Battle of Takodana. I believe it retailed for $40, I wanna say. So it came out in like 2015. It's only gone up $20 in value. We're talking about a sealed set here with one character from it that's only been made in this set with the molded head. It's only gone up $20 in, you know, what, seven years? It's kind of unheard of. That's pretty weird. For Lego Star Wars. Yeah. So kind of interesting. I'm surprised it even went up. I remember about a year ago, it was still selling at retail. This is a cool treat. I remember when this came out when I was a wee lad. This is the uh, um, the Wright Brothers plane. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is the first plane to ever take flight. Some people in Brazil disagree, but that's a whole other discussion. You know, they were uh, bicycle tire repairmen, I think is what they did. And they thought that, man, maybe we can make a plane somehow. So some bicyclists made a plane and then, you know, 40, 50, 60 years later, um, maybe 100 years later, I can't remember exactly when, I guess it says 1903. So 100 years later, Lego made a model of it. We got a lot of new sets here too, but I think the one I really want to point to, this one is just like play of the game worthy right here. The Batman Arkham Asylum Breakout. So this one, if you're familiar with the Arkham Asylum games, is pretty much the closest Lego got to this. I really like how they use the little frogs as the heads on the gargoyles. It's really- That's really creative. Yeah. It's yeah. very creative. So this is, a lot of people kind of consider this era like peak DC, um, peak Batman Lego. And uh, I can agree with it. I mean, it's this is really cool. This is, I mean, look at this. You get the Joker, you get Robin, you get Scarecrow, Poison Ivy, the Penguin, Batman, Harley Quinn. And of course, it wouldn't be a Batman set if you didn't get a random security guard. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. What year did it come out? I don't see it. Oh. 2013, so yeah, that was a great year. That was honestly just a great year for Lego across all themes. So, Lord of the Rings, let's talk about it. Awesome, they actually have a Lord of the Rings set, kind of. Um, in the background there, you see they have the Barrel Escape. This is a really cool set. So this is from The Hobbit. This is when the elves are chilling out, drinking a little bit too much wine. They're not paying attention to what's going on. Bilbo releases the dwarfs downstream. I'm super excited to see a Hobbit set. Unfortunately, I'm looking a little bit more for Lord of the Rings 
And I don't see a lot of it, but I think I might know where we can look. All right, so okay. check this out. You guys are really gonna love this, especially Lord of the Rings fans. So this is Cassie. She works here at Bricks and Minifigs up here in Austin. And we wanted to show off her sweet sleeve. Check this out. You have Lord of the Rings Lego tattoos all up and down her arm. I think it's the most incredible thing. <laughs> What do you have to say about it? What's your favorite part? Um, so one of the cool things about the artist is Heather Miranda. Uh, she took a Sharpie and freehanded Rivendell here on my elbow, um, which is a super cool wow. feature. Yeah. Um, and then Bilbo up top in the tree. Uh, technically, he shouldn't be wearing his pajamas. I know. Uh, <laughs> but that was one of my favorite scenes where he's on the top of the tree and the leaves can change from leaves to butterflies. I wanted to really capture that moment. Oh, that's cool. No, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love like little Lego pieces too. Like, yeah, all the green. yeah, yeah. So she cool. did a really good job. She did, yeah. So yeah, make sure if you guys come over, check it out. If you're lucky, maybe she'll let you look at your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so Ross is super excited over here. We have some Mtron, Blacktron. What do you think, Ross? Okay, so this is a huge treat to get. So store clerks were just telling me that this just came in recently. And mint condition, I'm talking minty fresh spearmint, <laughs> is they have a mixture of Mtron and Blacktron here. And this is really cool. Again, this is a little bit before my time, but I remember seeing a lot of this in like my cousins. Um, older cousins like Lego bins and stuff. I really like here the use of magnets. So back in the day, they used a lot of magnets, even in the train sets that I remember when I was a kid, they had a lot of these cool little magnet pieces. So it's really cool. I guess I'm wondering if the M and Mtron stands for Magnetron. I don't know, because oh, there's no, a lot of magnets. Sense. And then take a look over here. So this is actually uh, Space Police, old school, man. Space Police has certainly come a long way over the years. And then what do we see here? Look at that. Does That's that familiar. familiar, yeah. What is it called? It's called the Blacktron Invader. So again, January 1st of 2023, you could actually get this remade with, as a gift with purchase for $200 at Lego. That's wild to see it because the gift with purchase looks just like it. Like they did yeah. a really good job. They literally recreated it. It looks like it looks But really like in good. a modern way. Yeah, yeah like just that. a little so bit more modernized. Wings closed. Look at that. that man. That's so cool. How cool is that? Man, no, I've never seen these in person. This is awesome. I remember these like giant little things you could put on their heads so they can like fly away like that. I guess they're jetpacks or something. Fun fact, if you actually own like a black light, this kind of color of fluorescent green will light up. So I remember I had a lot of pieces of this color that I think I got from some of these sets long ago. You turn on a black light and it just, it's really cool. <laughs> and then along the front wall here, they have a ton of different foil packs and poly bags. They have a lot of like Marvel, Star Wars, and some of them have ships, some of them have minifigs. But then something I haven't seen before is this one here, this little poly bag. I guess it's like a Knight's Kingdom one. What year is this from? Oh wow, from 2000. That's insane. So we've been working on the Lego City and like the 90 year anniversary castle. I feel like this would look really cool in there. All right, and then looking over here along the front wall, they have some light year stuff. And then Ross is fiddling with this. Ross, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so this is actually one of my favorite three to one creator sets. Uh, I remember I bought it on a whim a few years ago. And it's a little ride, and it actually fits really well in anyone's like amusement park. And you can even motorize it like I did. But what happens if you spin it too fast, the inertia goes so fast that the figures fly off. So, you know, that's a wonderful time. Probably a safety hazard, but I enjoy it. Whoa, look at this. So um, I've seen this set like a million times, but I've never actually looked in it. It's a little really chandelier. Like, yeah, I'm like, wow, that's they really put a lot cute. of work in that little chandelier. I love like the modern vibe of this, you know, like all the glass windows in the front. It seems really impractical for privacy, <laughs> you know, like everyone <laughs> can just see you. But that's a really cool chandelier build. I love that. Wait, is this a little goose in the tree? What is that? Probably some sort of bird, sparrow, Aww. cockatiel. Then we come down here. So I point out this volcano crawler because it made me think of, uh, you know, my favorite line, power miners. And I remember there used to be a lot of power miner sets here and they were gone. So what does that tell you, Lego? We want to play with rocks. I really like this set here and it actually has like this function where you can just kind of push this back here and like drill. And just... Did you have this as a kid? No, I didn't. This is newer. This is 2016. Oh, so wow. It's not really okay. not that old. Uh, but I really like it. And actually, I really like the little stubble on that guy. It kinda kind of looks like you. He's kind of handsome. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> Robo Explorer. Beep, beep, beep. So this is a really interesting set. I remember when this came out, I was really hyped up because I was I couldn't believe that uh, Lego actually made a little MODOK um, figure. They actually made two now uh, as well. as This was like the first time you could get Hulk in like just a normal purple pants kind of attire, like comic book style. So I really liked early like Lego Marvel stuff where they really like emphasized 
on the comic book styles more than the movies, but I'm just a purist like that. So. Wait, so they have the Monster Book of Monsters here. This is a gift with purchase from Lego Harry Potter in 2020. I have, I think, one of these at home. It's still new in box. I'm kind of scared to build it, but I didn't know it could do this. Check this out. Ah! <laughs> I didn't know it did that. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it yeah. bit you. My finger. Something else kind of exciting is the owner told us that he has a huge order of stuff on the way and it'll be on the shelves very soon. He ordered a bunch of new minifigure displays, some light kits, minifig and military customs, as well as custom base plates that interlock. I don't really know what that means, so I'm excited to see more about it. And so from now through the end of February, there's gonna be a ton of new stuff in store there. So definitely stop by and check it out. They have a lot of cool figures here. Um, there we actually see uh, Fiesta Leia. Uh, the, I call her that because she's wearing a poncho. Um, and then right behind her is Commander Gree. And I just think that's such a beautiful figure. And then way in the back there, we see Plo Koon standing next to a clone. Uh, a lot of cool figures they have over here. Um, they have a few Sabine Wrens from Rebels, which is really cool. I love I know. that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm still seeing some battle droids, but I'm just wondering, you know, I've brought this up before. Lego hasn't made B2 battle droids in like, since 2015. And eventually, you know, they're gonna start running out of it in the resale market. So I wonder what's gonna happen with that. Look at all these stormtroopers. They have every type of stormtrooper you really need. Um, pretty impressed with it actually. Uh, it's just a grand old army of the Republic, you know? Ooh, and this is kind of exciting in the back there. I see the Blue Milk Luke Poly bag. Now we actually missed out on this one, so I'm kind of bummed about it, but maybe eventually we'll pick this one up. I just like his little blue mustache. It's so cute. And then Ross is really excited about Jabba. Ho, ho, ho. Bring me Solo and the Wookiee. <laughs> so I'm looking at the Star Wars aisle and it's a little bit bare. So I was talking to the clerk about it earlier and they're just saying Star Wars is popping right now, which is millennials speak for it's bussing right now, uh, which really just means that, man, if you got Star Wars sets you want to sell, now it's the time because they're, they're rolling over really quick. Um, but one thing that's kind of cool to see, it's not actually Star Wars, but I really like this set. So this is the Nowhere Escape mission from Guardians of Galaxy 1. Uh, you get Nebula, and then you also get Groot as this like really awkward looking figure. He kind of looks like an Int from Lord of the Rings, but it's a really cool set. I really like this one, and then uh, it comes with a really cool Rocket Raccoon, one of my favorite versions of him. All right, so the clerks came by and told me that somebody actually left something for me here, which is uh, kind of shocking, but um, <laughs> I guess, guess. Yeah, I guess we'll see. So this is uh, two Ross from Mace. Uh, we'll see what it is. <laughs> okay, so it's a shirt. Aw, that's so Northwest sweet. Best Fish Company, Ridgefield, Washington. Aww. I don't know what it means, but I really like that crab. <laughs> it's I a cool crab. That's a cute crab. It's Aww. definitely my style. Yeah. Well, appreciate it, mate. Thank you so much. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's a cool shirt. It works because I'm a little crabby sometimes. It's true. <laughs> so when it comes to the town hall, on the one hand, it's the town hall. We don't have it. On the other hand, we are trying to save money, but on the other hand, it's a town hall. We don't have it. I don't know. What do you think? I think we need it. Yeah, I think it's we a need really it. good deal. We're definitely we need it. to get that. We've been <laughs> wanting it for the city forever. <laughs> Let's do it. It's gonna look so good. Alrighty, we're checking out. I'm so excited. Hey Emily, check it out. This is uh, something I did today at lunch. I lifted a fork up into my mouth. It's a forklift. Crusty Crab Pizza is the pizza with the Tivoli. Crusty Crab Pizza. Precious cargo. All right, let's go home because I am starving. Oh, me too.